I've decided to write a game with objects in a programming language without objects. So how can I do that? Now this is the latest in a series on this channel about procedural programming. That's the sort of programming that everyone did once upon a time before object orientation started to take over. Procedural programming is still with us and it's still important. C is a procedural language and so is Pascal. There are, of course, extensions to C in Pascal, C++ and Object Pascal, but plain old C is still a hugely important language, and you can also write Pascal programs without using object orientation. And that's what I'll be doing in this video. For many programs, object orientation really isn't needed. I already have a long series of lessons on YouTube showing how to write an object-oriented adventure game in C Sharp or Java, and in that series I develop a whole class hierarchy of object types. But how on earth can I create that sort of object hierarchy in a language without objects? Keep watching, and I'm going to show you. In a previous video I showed a very simple game I wrote in Turbo Pascal. That's the same software I was using back in the mid-80s. In fact, the first really big project I ever wrote was an adventure game called The Golden Wombat of Destiny, and that was written in Turbo Pascal 3, a language with no objects. Now, I've adapted the code for this Turbo Pascal game to run in the modern Lazarus IDE, which uses the Free Pascal compiler. Free Pascal supports object orientation, but here I'm deliberately avoiding that and trying to write this program entirely procedurally, much as I did all those years ago in Turbo Pascal. But why would I want to write procedurally? Well, it's a good skill to have. As I said before, not all languages, even to this day, use objects. What's more, writing procedurally forces you to grapple with coding problems such as list management and memory allocation that you may, may never encounter with many modern object-oriented languages. And besides all that, well, it's also fun to do. Now in this program, you can see that a room is not a class as it would be in an object-oriented program, but a record. A record is a complex data type that includes multiple fields. Uh, it's the Pascal equivalent of a C struct. Here, my room, my room record, has two string fields, name and description, and four integer fields for the exits in each of the four compass directions. In an object-oriented language, room would undoubtedly be declared as a class, but as you can see here, a record does the job just as well. Though unlike a class, a record cannot include or encapsulate functions or methods. My map is an array of four room records, and pos is an integer which will save the room number, that is the array index, of whichever room the player is in at any given moment. When the game is loaded, the Lazarus project file tpgame.lpr runs. This includes the unit of code that I just showed called GameUnit. The code between begin and end down here is what runs first. This just calls my main loop procedure. Well, let's look at that. Main loop calls init and look. Init initializes the player's position to zero and fills the map with four initialized room records. It does this by calling room init, which assigns values to the fields of a room and returns that room record. The look procedure writes a line of text to output. It says you are in, then it gets the record at the player's position by using pos as an index into the map and it displays the text assigned to the, the description field of that room record. Okay, so once init and look have been run, the code of main loop continues. This executes this repeat loop. A repeat loop runs all the code between the keywords repeat and until, until this condition is true. That is, until the value of the character variable input is q. That character is read in here by the readlin procedure that reads in the line of text entered by the user. This case statement tests the value of input. If it's NSW or E, then these procedures are called to move the player. If input is L, the look procedure is called. Incidentally, in Pascal, once a match is made, the rest of the case block is skipped. In C and other C-like languages, you would need to break out of the block using the break keyword. Well, that's not needed in Pascal. All that's left to explain now are the movement procedures, NSW and E. Let's look at N. 
When N is entered at the prompt, the player wants to move to the room at the northern exit of the current room. A room record stores adjoining rooms as numbers which are indexes into the map array. When there is no exit, minus one is stored. In room zero, there is no exit on the north, so this test is true and no exit is displayed. But let's assume the player is in room two. That room has a northern exit to room zero. So this time, this test fails and the else part is executed. That sets the value of the pos variable to the value of the n field of the current room. As we've seen, that value is zero, so pos was two because the player started off in room two, but now it's zero because the player is moving to the north into room zero. That is the player's position, the value of the pos variable is now zero. And look is then called, which displays a description of this new room at map index zero. And that's this game in its entirety. Okay, so, so far so good. I've used a record instead of a class and room records fulfill the same function as room objects in an object-oriented game, but that still leaves the problem of creating class hierarchies. In a more complicated game, I might want a base class, say a thing class with a name and a description, and a room class that descends from thing and adds on four compass directions to represent exits to the rooms in those directions. In object Pascal, this is how I could do that. This is my thing class. And this is the room class which descends from the thing class. Then I could create other classes such as treasures that also descend from the thing class and so on. But since I'm now trying to write procedurally using records instead of classes, I have a problem. Records cannot be subclassed. In fact, while strictly procedural Pascal does not support inheritance, I can create a sort of hierarchy of records in which one record gives access to the fields of another record. Now let's look at an example. Here I create a basic thing record with a name and a description. Then, as before, I create a room record with four exits. But look, room has a thing object as a field. It contains a thing record rather than descends or inherits from a thing class as in an object-oriented project. In this way, a room record will give me access to the name and description fields of a thing record. I've also added a game ob record to let me create treasures and other game items. This also includes a thing record and it adds on a takeable boolean true or false field. A ring, for example, would be takeable, but a tree would not. The syntax for accessing the fields of the contained thing object requires that I specify the field name. So when R is a room and the TH field is a thing, a thing record, well, I write this. When I want to add new rooms to the map, I don't need to create them as I would with room objects, but I do need to initialize their fields. For comparison, this is how I create the map in my object-oriented code. And here, create is the object constructor method, which sets aside memory for a new room object, then both creates and initializes it. And then the room object is added to the map. But in my procedural version, I don't need a constructor for the room record. Memory is all, uh, already allocated in the array which is typed to hold room records. So I call room init to initialize the fields of a record and I add that initialized room at an array index of my map. Let me try this out. So now I can move around the game from room to room, which is the basis of any adventure game. This just leaves the problem of creating lists of treasure objects and taking and dropping them. In order to take and drop objects, I need to create some lists, a list of the treasures in each room and a list of the treasures in the player's inventory. As treasures are taken or dropped, both the inventory and the room lists will expand or contract in size. In an object-oriented language, I would have access to all kinds of list classes to make adding and removing items really simple. In traditional Turbo Pascal, that isn't the case. I can either use a fixed-length array or I can write list management routines using pointers. 
well, which should I do? I'll be looking at the pros and cons of both those approaches in another video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. And I hope to see you again soon for a deeper delve into procedural and also into object-oriented programming with Pascal and, no doubt, with other languages too.